Okay, it is the morning in the kingdom and it's warmed up a bit. Yes, the extreme cold weather warning on the weather network is over. Look at the flag exercise, he's happy. Just like me, look at me, I got freedom. Look, I can scroll this way. Look at that, the sun's coming up. It's clear but cold. There's a slight breeze. I don't know if you can hear it on the Lily Tomlin mic, okay, but I'll be turning here. But I just want to enjoy my freedom. It's like when I get out of Facebook jail or restriction jail or whatever. Jeez, you do anything, they put you in jail, they restrict you. But they want you to have 5,000 friends so you can talk to 25 of them. Isn't that unreal? And I also wish everybody a happy birthday on Facebook because that's what they want me to do. Okay, so then we can raise funds and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. So I give them my free book each time, okay? All right, let's scroll this way. So we got the wind to the back. All right, look at that. I got freedom. All right. Okay, let's stop right. I don't know. Can we see me? I can't see myself. I got a glare. Okay, maybe I'll walk out here. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm walking aimlessly lost here. Oh, I got a headache today too. I don't know why. It must have been the beer or something. It wasn't that Magdalo, Madalo, Bicolo drink or whatever. I never drank it. Worked too late. Didn't really have supper. I just snacked on cheese and crackers and stuff. The true Ritz ones that are extra cheesy, okay? I don't know if that's Canadian. All right, let's look at the sheet here. Oh, my head hurts. Okay, 7 o'clock this morning was minus 30 Celsius, but feels like minus 41 Celsius, which is about normal, right, or whatever, okay? And then on the yo-yo scale, minus 22 Fahrenheit, but feels like minus 42 Fahrenheit. Like, that's 20 degrees difference. That's strange. That's weird. I don't know. It's beyond my capability of thought today because my head hurts, okay? But look what I found in the shop, okay? All right. Oh, it's in my pocket here. I'm not organized. Ooh, maybe I'll chug a lug this and it'll give my headache an extra zing, all right? It must have been left over from Christmas or whenever the staff bought that, okay? But also, too... The spelling of the word thanks. We have a fellow on a Facebook page that the last five days, all he's doing is pointing out the spelling of thanks. All right? The word thanks comes from when I learned to type with two fingers. There's one finger, and that'll be the other finger on that hand, but it's holding the stick. So if I raise it up to give you the finger, the stick will fall, okay? And then you guys get you might get traumatized from hitting the dirt, okay? Or the snow. I'm going to have to turn. I can feel that wind. Oh, maybe I'll... Okay, I'm back. Miss iPod decided to censor me for some reason. I guess it's cold out here. I never noticed because it has been so cold for a week now. It felt warm when I was standing there holding a stick out in the middle of the yard. But now I ha I've had my freedom then. Just like in Facebook, I get released and then I say something, now I'm restricted. So now I can't scroll anywhere. I can go this way and I can go back that way because now I have the iPod. Miss iPod stuck in the shop door where it's nice and warm. Okay, back to the word thanks. That's my trademark spelling. We have t-shirts made up, which we don't have anymore because of the COVID lockdown and we got to find a new supplier that can ship in the USA because we're not going to the post office to fill out duty forms and all that crap and declaring and all this crap. It's just unreal. I want the merchandise of the King of Ops League goodies to be like Amazon. The people buy it, they handle all the shipping, everything like that, and any problems or drama. Like, that works out good. Okay? Because we can't do it in Canada, shipping to the United States, because of the rules and the costs. The costs are unreal. We're being punished for living here and freezing our ass off. Okay? But back to the word thanks. That's my trademark when I learned to type with two fingers. Okay? And the best part is, the guy who drove the yellow coop in American Graffiti, he's an author too. And I seen his books on Amazon, so I followed along and stuff like that. So I bought one of his books and I read it, okay? But the books are old school typing and spacing and stuff, okay? Because that's the old school when you typed out the book in the 70s or whatever. And you typed it out, you had lots of spaces and everything like that. So he just put them on Amazon that way. Whereas my books, I take all the spaces out and I squish everything in tight because... 
the people are buying a book and Amazon is printing it because they're Amazon books. It's their cover, their everything. So I make it so it's easy for shipping. They're small and stuff like that. And there's no spaces. Like in that dominatrix school, okay, that failing military marriage book, there's 220,000 words. And I scrunched it all in to make it fit because I took out all the spaces, okay? All right. Oh. There's spaces between the words and the, and the paragraphs, say, but like not like double spacing like most authors and stuff. So I took a picture of me holding that guy's book, okay? And I'm wearing my thanks t-shirt. A year later, it shows up on the internet and he's having a good laugh at me spelling thanks. But he missed the whole point, okay? I'm standing there at the end of the world holding his book that was written in the 70s or the 80s, okay? That was the point, all right? So... It failed miserably. Like most of my marketing attempts fail. And then when I do something stupid, it just takes off like Ricochet Hill hit the snowbank, okay? But oh well, you guys can read about that in the Russian Roulette book, okay? All right. Okay, today we got to get back to work. Yesterday it tuckered me out. My head hurts. I don't know why. I don't know. It's like I had a bad hangover. But I drink professionally. I shouldn't have a hangover. Maybe I'm going to have to day drink to get rid of the hangover. Okay, enough of this. I better get going. The boss is coming. Okay, just like I figured. We put all the antifreeze in the V12, and I knew the water pump was going to leak. I don't know if we can see it down there. I got the flashlight. Oh, there it is. It's leaking. It's just wet. It's not a constant drip. But two years ago when I tossed the motor into this lin, I poured oil into the water pump. So maybe lubricate the seal, okay? So I figured this was going to happen. I'm hoping it seals up because I remember growing up and dad had a stock car and it used to leak all the time. And then once you run the motor, the leak would stop. But we had a pretty good production day yesterday and everything. But to me, okay, uh, like Lenny says, you're born a loser, live to win. Okay, that's me. Now, if I sold this motor to somebody in the States and a collector, he would have shipped it, we would have shipped it south and he would have poured gas down the carburetor, ethered it, had it up and running. You know, will it start? Will it start? And get a million views on YouTube. But not me. I know when I do a project like this, it's going to be nothing but drama, like a marriage. So I kind of anticipated the water pump leaking, but that's no problem as long as it doesn't start dripping too bad. And now we'll have to see about a seal kit from Sir Rodney. So we're learning. But also too, yesterday in the great fun we had, we also had to find the rat hoses. So we got into the cubby hole with rat hoses. And also too, we have all these empty antifreeze jugs, which make good bolt bins and collector bins and stuff like that. So we drain them out, cut the bottoms off and we're good to go. So we're quite happy to use up 14 gallons of antifreeze. So now we got bolt bins. Okay, I better get to work because the boss is coming. Okay, lunchtime in the kingdom and we're cutting up the winter front for the Lynn tractor because we don't need that panel. It's going to become the hydraulic tank because now we're not using the front of the grill or whatever at the top. There's a hydraulic tank because we have to make it rad fit. So over here we got our collection of fittings that we're going to have to cut apart to make the tank. So this will be a long drawn out process and I'll get to do lots of grinding. Oh well, I better go have some lunch. Okay, done an hour of plasma cutting, grinding, and die grinding to make everything fit. I want my fittings to fit nice and tight, and they're the recycled fittings out of the miscellaneous stuff from the mine, okay? So everything's going to work out good. I got it buffed clean. We're probably going to do three passes on each uh, fitting, so they're guaranteed not to seal. But we'll see how that turns out. And my hands are still tingling and vibrating from them running the grinder, hopefully... I don't have to grind too much today with, hopefully I can weld. Okay, that didn't take long to weld. So there's one pass with the MIG welder. Okay, the little Asian welder over here. Okay, I ran out of good wire. So then I put a no-name brand on sale wire into the MIG welder. So that changed the performance of this MIG welder big time. And I mean big time. That's like having a fiance and everything is going good. And as soon as she says I do, that's it, it's over. It's lay mass in the bedroom for you. But I was able to get the welds on here. So we do one pass with the MIG welder to get the gaps all filled in. And then we do the other side and weld there. And then the final pass is here around here. With this being on the side of the tank, there's two of the return fittings here. 
I went for the thicker plate because we're going to have two hoses on here. So there's vibration plus trying to tighten them. Like I'm not going to go walk around out in the cold air to, and the snow to find the proper steel. I'm using what's in the shop here. So we're going to have thick material here, thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, but it should all work out. If not, we'll drink more beer and figure it out. All right, it's coffee time. Okay, I worked late tonight because I wanted this hydraulic tank done, okay? And I've done a little leak test because I had some places where the sheet metal didn't line up and right in here, whatever. So we had to use a filler rod, okay? But it's welded on the inside, outside. Okay, we have the plugs in, but they're loose, okay? And stuff like that. So this is how we test it. You don't hook the air compressor directly up. You put everything in loose and you just crack that valve so you just hear a little bit of air, turn it off, okay? Because uh, you don't want this thing to blow up on you. But if everything goes wrong, these plugs will shoot out, okay? But you just want like maybe five pounds, maybe just enough to, to for the air to come out. So if we had any little bubbles, it would show up and it looks pretty good. But this is, I've done this for years and this is the safest way to do it. You do not put lots of air to it because I think 12 pounds will kill you or something, you know? So you just want just enough poof into it. What works good is if you put an inner tube off of a car and clap it around, clamp it around your, uh, oh, nipples there, okay? Clamp it around. And so the hose clamp on the air, uh, on the inner tube holding it on, if it gets too much pressure in it, it'll, the hose clamp will just pop off. We've done this before. Okay, but you guys can do this is the way we do it. And we've got lots of sudsy wudsies here, suds. All right, I'll go check my messages, see how Sir Rodney made out, and then we'll go check the flag of exercise. Okay, we're done for the day. I'm going to start the book burb here and go get the pony in town after I walk these dogs here because it's warm enough that we can actually walk the dogs. Look at the flag exercise and look at the moon way up there. So Rodney didn't send anything in Messenger, so I don't know if he's got a video of that dry shop being fixed. And we're going to put some TikTok videos because they were only three minutes long a year ago. So I'll add a bunch of TikTok uh, videos to the end of this video. So then you guys get an idea what life in the kingdom is all about. All right, let's go walk the dogs, pick up the pony, and drink some beer. Talk to you later. Okay, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon on Sunday in the kingdom. We're going to switch out some vehicles. We've got to move the 39 Chevy to get the 46 out. And the 38 GMC has to go in the shop. Because after I was done filming yesterday, it decided to bubble all the antifreeze out of the rod. Yes, a little volcano. That's because it blew a head gasket, we hope. That's no problem, but it's kind of funny because I posted on my Facebook and website that these trucks were together in a group 38 years ago when I lived down south and I had uh, blonde hair, or all my hair. All right, I'll keep you posted as I move these vehicles around. Okay, that took about five minutes for the mini hole to put the 38 GMC in the shop. Now, if I tried to start it, keep adding antifreeze because it's bubbling it out the rat, it would have been a nightmare. So I'm just about finished, and then I can drink some beer. All right, talk to you guys later. Okay, Sunday afternoon in the kingdom, and we had a uh, egg salad sandwich. That's what it was. It tasted good. Put lots of mustard in, and then you can't taste the eggs. Okay, we got the 45 Chevy three-ton rear end on the deck of the 46 Chevy. And in 1981 or 82, my grandpa and I took it apart. So I was just reliving the memories of when we did it. But see, Grandpa bought this truck brand new, so he knew everything. Plus, uh, his wife was a school teacher, so it was just, they didn't have Google back then. He just asked her. So now I have to use the verniers and the thread gauge, or we have meter tool, whatever, to figure out the threads on this spindle and these nuts. Because I think that they upgraded the 38 Maple Leaf and put a 45-46 Chevy three-ton rear end under that truck. That's why nothing is cross-referencing. Also, when we have the, the unit apart, we mark down the part numbers of everything as we go along, and that way we have a record. So if we blow a wheel bearing, we know where it is. And it's kind of nice working up in the air here on the deck. And then when I'm done this, I will now pop these ones off so I can get a measurements and get everything figured out too. So work uh, up high and then work down low and then my back and knees will hurt so I'll have to go drink some vodka. Okay, it's just after coffee in the kingdom here. I'll adjust my mic here like Lily Tomlin. Okay, 
We did the 45 Chevy three ton. We got it apart. Everything's marked. We know what we need. Now we went down here. See all the rust because this is that seal system that I'm telling you guys about that they kept the bearings here as grease. And then they tried to keep the oil from the rear end in the rear end. So what happens when the grease comes or wears out, everything rusts and you have moisture, condensation and the rotation of the earth involved. So the bearings and everything are kind of toast. But what upsets me the most is for 20 years I used this as a water truck or trailer. I towed it around and I always made sure there was oil in the rear end thinking that these bearings were getting grease. But on the other side, the one bearing is rusted right onto the to the hub or the spindle. So we have to order new bearings so we can get that one fixed. And of course the brake shoes are well greased and oiled so stopping is a problem. But no problem. All right, I'll continue on. Well, we're having fun in the kingdom and we know why the 38 GMC overheated at minus 35 or whatever day temperature was that day. Because the thermostat didn't open. Okay, we got boiling water here and it's not opened. So that means it's screwed. But we'll check the temperature here. I changed the door to Fahrenheit for all my American friends. So you guys can understand. And that thermostat should have opened a long time ago. Also, seeing how we're in the kingdom here. We've been busy packaging. So this is what four rolls of tape and cardboard looks like. So this is the grill for the 37 tribute, 37 Dodge tribute truck, which the guy won on a draw last Sunday. So it's getting mailed out when the post office reopens. And we have the hood for the 37 Dodge tribute truck, and it has to go in two pieces. Now Rodney at West Trans is getting the brake shoes for the 45 Chevy three ton and the 46 Chevy truck. So I've kind of cleaned them up for him and he'll reline them because you know they're a little thin or whatever i'm not sure if this video is working it could be really dark and oh well we'll give it a try but look at all that dual exhaust and single exhaust i don't know how cold it is my feet are cold but the 38 gmc had a stock thermostat now it's outside i'll walk around to the other side i won't record till i usually fall down Okay, I'm on the other side of the truck, so I walked around and I didn't trip and fall. But the 46 looks good with the dual stock. The 38 GMC is sitting here running with a single stock. And you can see why we put tire chains on, because I wouldn't be able to go anywhere. And we'll just scan over here. There's the puppy looking at us. The 86 Dodge head hanger and the 39 Chevy. Oh. And that building there with the plywood door, that's my recording studio. So I can take my books on Amazon and make them audible. That way people can listen to me as they fall asleep. Talk to you later. Okay, this is the reason why I have to move all the black wheat around. Because we have to get the D6 cut. This is the hood. It was underwater for three years, so we've been plowing snow and such. So we got to give it a good little service. Get it ready to plow more snow because the snow isn't stopping. Okay, now the cat's in the shop for the night. All the snow will melt off, flow down towards the door and freeze the door. But that's why I have a mini hoe and snow and ice is no problem. But you can tell how small the shop is when the cat is so big. All right, we'll talk to you later. Okay, one of the great funds of living at the end of the world and the parts guy Rodney is in West Trans in Winnipeg. That's 1200 kilometers away. I gave him the part numbers and everything like that, said that this clutch is 11 inch and it's in the transmission and every, on the motor that we're going to put in my daughter's 45 Chevy 3 ton. Rodney comes back and says there is no 11 inch for that year, that phase, whatever. So he, the only way to prove it is to go take the clutch off. So I think Rodney won a case of beer with his co-workers when he told them that I bet the king of obsolete will go out and take the clutch out of the off the back of the engine or I'll drop the tranny and take the clutch off and that's what I did so I think Rodney just got a case of beer because now when I return back in the house with the clutch and everything here this which is all frosting up it's only minus 35 outside Rodney says oh I flipped a page in the parts book or on the computer and there's the 11 inches so now I know Rodney won a case of beer because he knew I'd do that but now we can confirm that this is the clutch Rodney will have the clutch for me and everything is good so ordering a simple clutch and flywheel or clutch or whatever for that 45 Chevy 3 ton which will have the 305 motor in it 
uh, my friend Chaz down in Georgia, which is 3,700 kilometers to the south of here, suggests we check to make sure that it's not a one-piece seal. So we look at the, I had to go out to the trailer in the dark with the flashlight and the cordless drill and buff some numbers and everything was cold and freezing. It was terrible and my glasses fogged up. But there it is, it's the one piece seal, so now Rodney has to find a flywheel with a smaller bolt pattern and everything will work out. So a little bit of drama is all handled and now we can go drink some beer. Talk to you later. Okay, sorry for not being on TikTok, but we've been busy in the shop. As you can see, we got the big cat in here, the D69, you known as the hood because it was underwater for three years. But the last couple of days, we've had a lot of freight come in from the south. And Rodney at West Trans has got my big wish list because we got a little bit of money from selling my uh, working equipment or whatever for my retirement. So we're inventorying up. So Rodney has to find all this stuff, which is next to hard these days because of the shortages and everything. But now we can get onto some of our projects and fulfill. But also, I'm getting smart by overstocking in those air fittings because I know when I'm 70 years old and can't no money to buy an air fitting that's leaking, I'll have it in an inventory because I don't think I'll be changing the size. And the little mini hoe is in the shop because we have to take the clutch out of the D6 cat. So the clutch is down in there under the air cleaner. But since I've modified this cat drastically and we put a windshield on it and made the hood bigger, I created my own problems in trying to get the clutch out. So I'm going to use the little mini hoe to reach in to lift it out. Because at my age, I know I won't be able to lift it. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Okay, here we are. I'm in the 3 o'clock coffee time in the kingdom. People ask me for a little walkthrough for the kingdom. But we've been outside working. So here's the deck of the house. This is where I feed my birds. And that's my wind gauge. So if it's windy, it's moving. Just like that, it's moving right now. Okay, so we parked the 86 Dodge over here. I don't know if you can see the huge snow banks by the recording studio to make my books on Amazon audible. But that's a lot of snow the staff had to shovel through. Okay, now we'll try and walk down these stairs here without falling down. And part of the Black Fleet here. Oh yes, they got a bark. And I think crew cab that the staff dug out of the snowbank. We've had enough of it. I've owned it since 2010. So it's time to get stripped and go for parts. It was a good truck, served its purpose. I'm colorblind, so the salesman sold me a pink crew cab. But we had to make some modifications for it to survive the Great White North, like the exhaust stack and the box or whatever, because the factory boxes kind of fell apart. Okay, and then over here, the staff and I put her skidoo shed on the skid. Okay, we didn't plan on it. We didn't know how I was going to do it, but it was up on pallets and it kind of fell onto the skid. So now we can go in the shop to be, how would you say, secured onto the skid and centered. But these are a few other of the items in the kingdom and the blade off the D6, the Thor, the plow truck. And of course, we can't forget the Lynn tractors and the Lynn tro the little shop that I got. Okay, it's too cold. That's it. I'm going inside to drink some coffee with some vodka in it. Talk to you later. Okay, we're off to a slow start today. It's afternoon or after coffee in the kingdom and we got the mini hoe to lift out the clutch. But as you can see, this little shop has lots of roof height, uh, but the door isn't very high. So we had a hard time getting the cat in here with the windshield on, so, but we have the mini hose so we can scrape it down. So the clutch goes down in here. And in the service manuals by Caterpillar for 1957 or no, be 52, I think it was. No, this is 1950. Sorry, I get my cats mixed up. Okay, there, right there is where my finger's pointing. That's where the pup motor used to sit, but I don't like pup motors, so they go for scrap. We have the direct electric start on here, so it starts at 40 below, it runs, it goes, but I put a windshield on. So we had to cut the windshield frame off. Oh, there's my finger. Cut the windshield frame off because we knew that this was going to be in the road. And we got it out. No problem, just like they said in the book. Push it out, winch it up, and out it comes. So now that we got it out, we can fix the little problem. Oh, I just about slipped. But I have lots of inventory in the house. You can see that the yellow container 
I know it's yellow being colorblind because that's what I buy is yellow. So the nice gray container has the parts we need to put the impact in the output shaft in the clutch housing seal. So yeah, that's big words. So, okay, I'll continue our quest here and we'll update you as we go. Okay, we got the clutch out of the D69U known as the hood. The mini hole really made it easy, but this is why we had to take it apart. The clutch brake thingy kind of fell apart, but I guess after, you know, this many years and being underwater for three years too, and then what, 20 years use after recovery. So it's only fair that it kind of fell apart, but that's no problem. That's why we have a shop and we fix it here. All right, talk to you guys later. Okay, I'm outside. Uh, hopefully you guys can tell by the video. I don't know if it's too dark. But at 2 o'clock I plugged this TD-18 in. And we're going to try starting it. It looks like it hasn't been moved in a while. But we'll keep you posted on it. I don't know what kind of videos I can get with it being this dark out. But I got these yard lights from eBay. They seem to work a lot better than the ones I could buy locally. Alright, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, just while we were the snow, they did to start the cat. They fired right up. Good. We're only being plugged in five hours. Ah, uh, the little Swedish kid will be happy with the nice boat. Alright, it's cold out here. I gotta get to work. Okay, let's see what we can do here. See if we can get the cat out of the shop without wrecking the shop. Okay. Okay, I got my mic on, so I don't know if you can hear the cat or hear me. But the TD-18 had no problems dragging me out the D6. Now I knew, known as the hood, with the clutch out of it. But I tied the steering clutches back, so now it'll turn and follow. And we are using a short chain here, so this is the way we do it. I wasn't going to call the staff in at 7 o'clock at night to steer the cat, because then she'll be able to want beer as payment, and that's my beer for tonight. Okay, I'll keep you posted. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I got my mic on. We used the TD-18 to drag out my other little... The, well, the other D6 I have, or TD6, that has the angle blade that we can use. Seems how the D6 with the angle blade is broken with the clutch. So this is a TD6, and the T stands for tiny. It's a small little cat, but it has the angle blade, which works out good. So we're just lining them up to put them in the shop. All right, I think we've had enough today. We're cold, so we're going to call it a day, drink some beer. All right, talk to you later. Okay, last night at uh, 7 o'clock, I think it was when I called it quits, I was in this fan trader, because this is a storage trader, and I was at the front getting the clutch, the spare clutch out of the box here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a box up there, or a pallet with a box. There's a clutch in there from an engine that's taken apart, because that one kind of blew up. So I took it to the shop, and it was warm this morning, took it apart, there's no little clutch disc thingy. So I came out here this morning at minus 32, and rip this motor apart. So I got the clutch out, got it to the shop, and found out there is a piece in there. But this motor last ran in 2017, but it kind of took out a bearing. Just a minor detail. Okay, I'll go to the shop and explain some more. Okay, this morning at minus 32 and at 8 o'clock in the morning, I let my dogs run around the yard here, the house area, to have a poop and a pee. Okay, so while they were doing that, I don't have to watch and supervise them. I took this apart because I read about it in the service book. So this is a little disc that goes in here. And this is actually part of the release bearing, not the clutch brake as I was calling it last night. Because I was confused because of vodka. So I took it apart and seen that it's kind of mushroomed out or flied out or whatever. That's what fell apart. Okay, so the one I brought in the shop last night in the dark, I took it apart. Okay, over here. So I took it apart to find out there is no disc. These guys have been kind of running it without a disc or maybe they did the same thing that happened to me. The disc fell apart, they just kept going to get the cat home. Cause you know, cat trains and winter roads, whatever you're out in the bush, you gotta make it home. So now I went out and got this one. This is out of the motor that's laying over and I'm very pleased to see that it's brass, which is nice. So now I can put that in and know it's gonna work. But it's great fun working on this stuff and then work out in the cold and then come into the shop and, you know, you're sweating because you're in your skidoo suit and your winter clothes. But as you can see, this is all frosted up. So I'll quickly reassemble it, make some notes and put it back in the part in the shed trader there. So when I go to need it next time, I know it's not there. 
Okay, 6 o'clock in the kingdom. I packaged up the little D69U because it's going outside because we can't get those little discs. I need two of them, but only have one of them. So the thing really malfunctioned. Okay, so we just packaged the cat up and now we'll go outside. Okay, let's see what we can do. We actually get the cat out of the shop without wrecking the shop. Okay. Well, as you can see, the staff and I were a little busy and we had a miscalculation because the skidoo shed or skid that we're making for her kind of fit in the shop here, but there's not much room for the mini hoe to get out. So I don't know. I guess we're going to have to watch more Sesame Street or whatever because we thought we'd get it by. But I think once it's centered on the skid and the boards are trimmed up, it'll look a lot better. Okay, I'll go to the house and show you guys what we were doing there. Now, after working hard all day outside, freezing my tushy off, now I have to unpack all this freight that Roddy has been sending me, and it just gets bunched up at the post office. Oh well, talk to you later. Okay, I spent the morning in the house organizing the freight that Rodney had sent, and we had a couple boxes from Rock Auto, because Rodney doesn't sell ram horn manifolds, exhaust manifolds for small block Chevys from the 50s, because Rodney specializes in heavy truck repairs, differentials, and all that kind of driveline stuff. But we were able to use the mini hole because it folds up nice, and we got the white shed, or trailer, or whatever it was, mounted onto the skid. With it in angle last night, we were able to use it this morning to slide it forward and, you know, gravity things move forward. Look at those guys building the pyramids. They just slid those rocks up the hill. Okay, that's wrong. Wrong example. Okay, so we're all ready for in the morning to weld. We've got some straight angle iron here that uh, we're going to be recycling. It's nice and straight, you know, perfect for up here. It's rusted and we'll just weld little pieces underneath to the frame to hold the white box to it. All right, we'll go outside. Okay, we're outside as you can see, and of course somebody has to come and join us. As soon as I shut the door, somebody has to come outside too. Okay, I got the little TD6 plugged in, so that means tiny D6, where it's going to go in the shop, because it has to get serviced before we drag the white skid thing over to my daughter's house for her skidoo to be parked in. And tomorrow the staff gets to shovel out the D69U known as a Bismarck. Because it was sunk at the same time as the hood. It spent three years underwater. We have the V-plow on it from Kansas. Yes, a V-plow from Kansas. I don't know what they were thinking. Dorothy and Toto never really had an experience of a snowstorm down there. But I did some shoveling so I could get the cat plugged in. I don't know if you can see the cord there. It used to be pink. I think it's faded. But it's nice gray to me. Okay, it's Friday. I've had enough. I'm going to go drink some beer. Talk to you guys later. Okay, just a quick video here. It's Saturday, uh, probably 3 in the afternoon. We have no idea. We're working hard. We went to minus 4 Celsius. So now we're sweating. We went from minus 35, freezing our tushy off, to sweating our tushy. I'm being polite because ladies do watch this video. But there's the Bismarck cat up and running, kind of buried. Okay, we'll go to the other one. Good, the TD6 known as Aggie because he's an ag cat from the south and he's being punished by coming north here to plow snow. He had no trouble starting and firing right up. As soon as I got the camera out to make a TikTok video, the staff went and hid. She was riding the mini hoe here to find the firewood. Yes, our firewood is under all that snow. And it's supposed to get down to minus 35 again tonight, so we're being punished. All right, more to come. Okay, we got the Slayer, the white shed hooked up to the TD6, known as Aggie, the Ag Cat from the south. And the staff is out test driving her skidoo right now. It's the old skidoo. We'll just walk over here to show you what we did for the trailer. It was a trailer, but fell apart on the road. So we made it into a skidoo shed for the staff. Oh, here she comes on her old machine. That's the one that made her famous on Ice Road Truckers when she blew the belt and hand started it with one arm. Yeah, so. Okay, we're just about done for the day, so we'll talk to you guys later.